ladies and gentlemen, thank you everyone for, uh, for making it out today. Um, uh, this week we have uh, Hua Guo, and uh, <laughs> I'm not sure how that pronunciation it's, was. It's correct, yeah. Okay. Um, and uh, uh, he is a, uh, he's currently a postdoctoral fellow at Technion um, Israel Institute of Technology. And uh, I believe it, is it 9.30 p.m. there right now? Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so he has uh, very graciously agreed to, uh, to speak at this seminar at this very late hour for him. Uh, so I really appreciate that. Um, and uh, today he'll be talking about the prog dimension of random graphs. So uh, please take us away. Thanks a lot for the invitation and the introduction. Yeah, today I'm going to talk about the prog dimension of random graph. So it's based on John work when I was a graduate student, a graduate student at Georgia Tech with Kaelin Payton and, and my advisor, Luz Wonky. Okay, so before I formally introduce the definition of prog dimension, uh, let me give you some idea about what prog dimension is about. So actually it's about, it, it's some concept about complexity. So it's about representation. We are representation, it means that we try to find efficient or compact encoding of some objects. And this also relates to the decomposition problem where people try to divide an object into mean number of some simpler objects. Uh, Prog dimension is also a kind of dimension where people try to invite an object into mean number of one dimensional objects. Okay, so that is some high level idea of product dimension. Um, product dimension is actually a parameter related to all these concepts. And it was introduced by an Australian Porter and Hodo in the late 1970s. And there are, it is a natural notation, and there are many equivalent definitions. Uh, where we, I will give the definition in the next slide. Before our result, uh, previously there are many approaches have been applied to study this product dimension, including the algebraic ones, the combinatorial ones, and the information theoretical ones. And here we use some probabilistic approach. And it has been proved that it is NP hard to determine product dimension for general graph. Therefore, you can see to determine the product dimension of graph is an uh, interesting but hard problem. Uh, in this talk, I will give a result where we determine the order of product dimension of random graphs and it resolve a product dimension conjecture by a Fudian counter. Okay, then we can move on to give the definition of the product dimension. So here, if you have our graph G, then the product dimension of the graph G is the mean number K such that there exists a K colorable click edge covering of the component graph of G. So here I, I need to explain the uh, definition word by word. So what is a click covering of a graph? So click edge covering of a graph is a collection of uh, clicks in the graph so that they cover all the edges of the graph. So for example here, if you have a graph look like this one, then you can see those colorful clicks, they form a click covering of the graph because each edge of the graph is covered by at least one of the clicks in the collection. So they are click covering of the graph. And next, if you have a click covering, so what does it mean? It is key colorable. It is key colorable means that we can color the clicks in the collection so that the clicks in the same color class are vertex disjoint. Then you need to notify that for this click covering, it is three colorable, but not two colorable because we can color them by three colors. And for this vertex, because these three clicks share the same vertex, then they must receive different colors. Therefore, the uh, click chroma number of them is three. So that is the definition of product dimension. So that is the minimal k such that there exists a k colorable 
click edge covering of the component ground key. So this product dimension was introduced by Nostril, Porter, and Rodo. Uh, there are many equivalent definitions. Uh, this one I give here is more useful for us. Uh, for brevity, we can just define the click command number to be the product dimension of the component graph of key. So that means the minimal K such that there exists a K colorable K covering of the graph G itself. So that's a clear chroma number. So to see why it is, it is a clear chroma number, so you can build each click edge covering as a hypergraph. So the vertex side of the hypergraph is just the vertices of the graph G itself. And the vertices of each clicks in the collection they correspond to a hyper edge. Therefore, you just need to color the hyper edge by different color so that if two hyper edge share some vertex, then they need to receive different colors. So that is another point why it is called click chroma number. So it's related to chroma number of some hyper graph. So I hope everyone uh, understands the definition of this uh, click chroma number because later on we we will talk about this parameter. So it's a good point if you have any question. So there's one edge in the graph. It, it shares, it, it belongs to two cliques, but that's inevitable or is that's okay, right? This, this uh, the edge between that blue and red clique? Uh, so um, you mean, uh, mm -hmm. So for this edge, yeah, because they are uh, in this click and in this click, this click will color by red and this click color by blue. So that that particular edge that belongs to both, that's okay. It's just covered by both. It doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah it, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The only requirement is that if they share the same vertex, they need to receive different color. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, and actually, it's a good point. I will talk a little bit about if they are disjoint. Yeah, please. All right, let's move on. So, uh, Fruity and Counter make the following conjecture. They conjecture that with high probability, the product dimension of the binomial random graph GNP has the order of magnitude n over log n for all constant p. So as some remarks, actually the product dimension of some graph can be as large as n minus one, which is much larger than uh, n over log n. So this real states that uh, actually for most of the graph, the product dimension is roughly n over log n, because we know that when p equals to one half, the binomial random graph g n one half just means uh, it takes each n vertex graph uniform and random. So if this whole is high probability, it means for almost all the graphs, the product dimension is roughly n over log n. So uh, this n minus one case is very rare. And to prove this conjecture, know that we only need to prove that the click command number, which we defined in previous slide, has the order of magnitude n over log n. Because by definition, we know that the product dimension of GNP is just the click command number of the component graph of GNP. And we know that the component graph of GNP has the same distribution as GN one minus P. So if we can show this bound for all constant P, then we will be done. All right, so then we will focus on uh, to prove this click command number. So first of all, the lower bound is simple and that's why they make such conjecture. So let's look at the lower bound. So what is the lower bound of the click chroma number of GNP? So first of all, if we take our vertex with the maximum degree, they have so many edges, and we need to, co uh, we need to cover them by clicks. And the largest click we can use is, uh, is this one, right? They can cover so many edges. And for those clicks, they need to receive different colors because they share the same vertex. Therefore, we need at least so many clicks to cover the edges that incident to this vertex. Therefore, we know that the maximum degree of GNP is roughly n times p, 
on the maximum clicks in GNP is roughly two times longer than where the base is one over P. Therefore, as you can see, the lower bound is simple. We need at least so many colors to color, color the clicks in the click covering of GNP. So this is a lower bound, and that is also why they make such conjecture. Uh, we need to prove an upper bound. So to prove an upper bound, we need to show that with high probability, there exists a click covering so that the chromatic uh, click chromatic number of that click covering is at most some n over log n. So that is a difficult part because this kind of bound suggests that we need to deal with clicks of very large size, roughly log n, the size of log n. And to deal with click of such size is typically a hard problem. Okay, so let's move on. So is there any question about this conjecture? All right, now let's move on. So actually we prove this conjecture by showing that with high probability, the click chromatic number of GMP is n over log n for all constant p. Uh, this verifies the product dimension conjecture by a counter. Uh, actually, we can extend this result to two, two directions. One direction is that not just for uh, constant p, we can prove some result and allowing p goes to zero as n goes to infinity. So that is one direction to extend our result. Uh, we can also extend our result in another direction as uh, Smith mentioned. So because here we focus on the click chroma number of click covering of GNP. So actually we can require the click covering to be a click partition, which means we require a collection of clicks that cover all the edges of GNP, but the edges in different clicks are edge disjoint. So we can get some edge partition variance of this result, which is stronger. So that is another direction. Okay, so what's the motivation for us to study this kind of problem? First of all, as I mentioned, when p equals one half, the binomial random graph gn one half just take each n vertex graph uniform at random. So this result states that for almost all the graph, the product dimension and the click chromatic number uh, has order of magnitude n over log n. So that is property for almost all the graph. And another motivation is that to study this kind of problem, we need to uh, covering GNP or decomposition GNP into clicks. So that is really to covering and decomposition problems. And in this direction, there are some previous results. So I will mention two of them. The first of one, we know that with high probability, if we take a minimum size of the click covering of GNP, then free and read prove that the order of magnitude of that one is roughly n square over log n. Uh, for the end counter in 2018, they prove that if we take the minimum of the maximum degree of the k covering of GMP, that is roughly n over log n. So what is the maximum degree of k covering? So here we will the k covering again by a hypergraph. We will it as a hypergraph so that the vertex of the hypergraph is just a vertex of GMP. And the hyper edge of the hypergraph is the vertex side of the clicks in the click covering. So they prove that the maximum degree of that one is roughly this one. So as we have seen, the, uh, the click command number of the click covering is at least the maximum degree of that because for all, for all the hyper edges in set 12 vertex, they need to receive different color. Therefore, our result actually implies this result. Okay, so next I will talk about the idea of to prove this, uh, our result. And that is another motivation because we use two different random greedy approaches to prove our result. Okay, so is there any question about this theorem? So let's move on. So as I discussed, we only need to prove the upper bound, which is the hard part. 
on to pro upper bound, we need to show that there exists a click covering so that the chromatic index of the uh, click covering is at most C n over log n. So uh, our proof strategy contains two parts. The first part, we need to find the click covering. So we find such click covering by some semi random approach, which is also called Rodo Nibo method. So that we find a click covering C step by step. And uh, in each step, we find some collection of clicks. And, we, and then we take a union of them to be the click covering. So that's the first part. And the second part, we need to bound the chromatic index of, uh, of this click covering. And the idea is that we bound the chromatic index of each sub collection, and then we take the sum of them. And we bound the chromatic index of each sub collection by some random gradient algorithm, which I will mention later. So that, that's a high level idea of the proof strategy. And I will talk a little bit about the details about them. So first one, how, how do we find this clay covering? So to find this clay covering of uh, GNP, we start with G0 equal to the uh, binomial random graph GNP. And once we have the graph GI, then we take some uh, clicks of size roughly A times log N. And basically this one, where PI is some parameter. We take out some random clicks we take out some clicks randomly to form the collection of clicks, which we call CI. And then we remove the edges of those clicks from GI to get GI plus one. And then we repeat. So that's the, uh, what we call semi-random algorithm to get the click count. So we do it for many steps. And for some family step, we get the graph G capital I. And finally, we take all the edges of this graph to be clicks of size two, and we take it into CI. And then we take union of this, uh, of those collect collection of clicks. And you can see that this union of, of uh, clicks, they really cover all the edges of GNP, right? Because uh, each edge of GNP is in some clicks. Right? Okay. And the key property here about this semi-random approach is that for each graph GI over here, the graph GI is, is actually behaves like a binomial random graph GNPI, where PI is a parameter we just mentioned, and it's de uh, decreasing and it, it's decreasing exponentially. So it actually has this relation, and of course there are some technical twists. And uh, one more thing is that we can guarantee that the clicks in the C, in each CI are almost actually disjoint. So that is a very good property. And by the way, because the clicks of in each CI has stress size roughly A times log n. So as you can see, it can be really large as some log n. So they are really large clicks. Okay, so that's the idea about how to find the clicks in, uh, how to find the click current C. So that is part one, the semi-random part. And part two, we need to bound the chromatic index of this C. And to bound the chromatic index of C, as we discussed, we just need to, uh, that, that is just upper bound by the sum of the chromatic index of each sub -action. And if we can show that the chromatic, chromatic index of each sub collection is at most some constant C times the maximum degree of the uh, sub collection, again, we will this collection of peaks as a hypergraph, where the vertex is just the vertex, uh, just from one to N, and the hyper edge correspond to the vertex side of the peaks in this collection. Right. So this, this is a chromatic index, and this is the maximum degree of that hypergraph. So if we can show this relation, then actually we can finish the proof. So why is true? Uh, so if we can prove this one, actually this, this, this bound hole. So why this bound hole? That is because for each uh, collection CI, the click 
as we discussed, the clicks in it are almost actually strand. And if we look at the maximum degree, it's roughly n over p. Uh, that is, sorry, that is roughly n times pi over the click size. So n times pi is the uh, maximum degree of the hypergraph ti, uh, sorry, of the graph ti, because we know that gi behaves like the band number random branch in pi. So that's the maximum degree of gi, and that is the clicks in this collection. So the maximum degree is just the, as we have seen it over this one. And for the last part, because we take all the edges of G capital I as a click of size two. So the maximum degree of that, of that graph is roughly n times P capital I, which is this one, because we know P I behave like this one. And by some computation, you can show that the sum of this term is really bounded by this one. Okay, so. If we can show this kind of bound, the chromatic number of this hypergraph is a constant C times the maximum degree of this hypergraph, then we have a complete bound proof. Uh, here, here is some thought for the last step, because we know that GI is really a graph. We have this, this relation. The chromatic index of this graph is almost a two times, say two times the maximum degree of this graph. This, this is true by reason theorem because that is graph. But for i less than capital I, we really need to deal with hypergraph because the clicks in, in CI has size really large. So they are really hypergraph. And to prove this kind of bound, we need some Perpendicular Spencer like result. So, what is a Perpendicular Spencer like result? So, that's the result of Perpendicular Spencer. They prove that uh, if you have an over has hyper, hypergraph, which is k uniform, that k is a constant. And if you have some epsilon, greater than zero. And if your hypergraph is nearly regular, so for nearly regular, it means for almost all the, uh, for, for all the vertex, the degree of the vertex are roughly the same. And if, you, if the hypergraph has small code degree, which means for any two vertices, they are in a small number of hyper edges. Then program spins that prove that the chromatic index of that hypergraph is at most one plus six epsilon times the maximum degree of the hypergraph. Therefore, you can see this type of bound is really some constant C times the maximum degree type bound. So that is what we want. But the problem is that we cannot use permanent Spencer result directly because in their, their result, the uniformity of the hypergraph K must be a constant. But as we have seen in uh, our hypergraph CI, because the clicks in CI has size can be as large as log N. So that's not a, con that's not a constant. So we cannot use permanent sensor result. Uh, uh, that is the, the problem, but we can overcome this problem because our CI is a random set of clicks, we can use the random, randomness to overcome the problem. Uh, that is our hypergraph chromatic index result. So our chromatic index result for hypergraph stays as the following. So if you have a hypergraph, host hypergraph H, which is K uniform and vertex hypergraph, so that uniformity of H the k satisfies this relation. So k can be as large as some constant b times log n. And the host graph h is nearly regular, which means for all the vertex v of the hypergraph, the degree of the uh, vertex is roughly, uh, roughly d. Uh, thirdly, it has small code degree, which means for any two vertex of hypergraph, they are in at most C. They are in much less than D number of edges, D many edges, hyper edges. So if you host the graph H satisfy these three conditions, then for a random sub hypergraph HI, where you take M edges uniformly random, where M is not too small, and M is much less than the total number of your host, host graph H. Then we can prove that with high probability, the chromatic index of HM 
is at most one plus delta times the maximum degree of each i, where delta satisfies this relation for the constant. So here the chromatic index of the hypergraph means you need to color the edges of the hypergraph so that if two ed edges share a common vertex, then they have to receive different color. So that is chromatic index of the hypergraph. Okay, so the key point for our chromatic index result is that it allows the edges of a random hypergraph to be as large as log, uh, as large as big O of log n. So that is the key point for our theorem. So, okay, so as a corollary, if you uniform case much less than log n, then we get the permanent Spencer like result. Here, because here, uh, you will have b equal to little of one, therefore delta is some little of one term, therefore you get one plus epsilon constant. But in our problem, we really need to use the bounds that the uniformity is bigger of log n, and here b is not some little of one term, but some constant term, therefore this is constant term. You get the chromatic index of hm is at most big constant c times maximum degree of h i. And that is what we want. Therefore, we can imply that uh, the chromatic index of this collection of clicks is the most c times the maximum degree of the collection of clicks. Here, because we take the clicks from, recall that from g i, and uh, therefore the host graph actually satisfies these three conditions. So we can apply it. And therefore we have proved our uh, click chromatic index result. Okay, so in the following time, I will discuss a little bit about the proof idea to prove this, the idea to prove this chromatic index result. So is there any question about this chromatic index result? All right, if not, we will move on to discuss the uh, idea to prove this chromatic index result. So uh, actually we use some random greedy algorithm to color the edges of this random hypergraph HI by using so many colors. So why such so many colors is enough? Notice that the maximum degree of HM, the random graph HM, because it's a random graph, it's roughly equal to the maximum degree of your host graph and the fraction of edges, because it's, we take M edges from the host graph H, so the maximum degree should satisfy this relation. And here, because the host graph H is nearly regular, which means the number of h is roughly n times the degree over k. k is the uniform, uniformity. And if you plug in, you can see that the maximum degree is roughly this one. Therefore, it's enough to color the hm by so many colors. And we analyze this random greedy algorithm by some differential equation method. So what is the random greedy algorithm to color the the random sub hypergraph. So here is the random greedy algorithm. Uh, and it's, uh, the idea is simple. So assume Q is uh, all the color, all the possible colors that you can use to color the hyper edge. And uh, the random greedy algorithm work as following. For each step, you sample one edge of H uniform and random. And then you color the edge by an available color, uniform at random. So a color is available means the color is not used on any previous edge that intersecting with the edge you sample at this step. So for example, here is a three uniform hypergraph. And you have four available, uh, four possible colors, red, blue, green, and yellow. And the algorithm work as following. At first step, you sample one random edge, for example, this edge. And at this moment, 
all the four colors are available for this edge. Uh, we choose one of them, uniform at random. Example, we color it by right. And then we move on to the second step. We sample another random edge, for example, this edge. And at the moment, all the four colors are available for this edge. And we choose one of them, uniform at random. For example, we color it by green. And then we move on. We move to third step, we sample a random edge, for example, this edge. But at this moment, you only have two random, uh, you only have two available colors, blue and yellow, because the, it is intersect with a red edge and a green edge. So you only have two available colors, that is blue and yellow. We choose one of them, uniform and random. For example, we color it by blue. And then we move on to next step. For example, we sample this edge. We get this edge. And at this moment, you only have one available color because it intersect to a red edge and intersect with a blue edge and intersect with a green edge. So you only have one uh, color, you color it by yellow. And then you move on. So as you can see, this algorithm works if for all the step F, you have available colors. For, so that will be enough. Okay, so. And here our main claim is that with high probability, we can color the images properly by those Q colors. And we only need to show that for all the steps, there are, there are really available colors for each edge. Uh, that is true. Actually, by differential equation method, using the sort of random assumption of the host graph H, so that H is nearly regular and a small code degree, we can prove that with high probability, for all the edges of a host graph H and all the steps from between zero and I, the number of available colors for the edge E after I step, we already know that it's QEI, is concentrated around this parameter to the power of K times Q, where Q is the initial possible colors. And that is enough because if we can show this QEI is much greater than one, we will be done because we never run all of the available colors and it will be done. And that is true because as you can see, this, this number is decreasing as, as I increase. And it's a take minimum when I equal to I'm the maximum number of steps. And we plug in, it will be equal to this one. And because we have some constraint on the uniformity, and if we take it over here, by some computation, it can show that it's much greater than this one. And because there are some relation between this constant, we can show that it's much, uh, it is greater than zero, therefore it's much greater than one. It means we never run out of our available colors. It means our random gradient algorithm can color the M edges, M random matches properly by the Q colors, and that will be done. Therefore, at the moment, we prove our uh, chromatic, uh, chromatic index result for random hypergraph. Okay, so that is a proof right here. Okay, uh, I will mention one open problem. So as an open problem, uh, can we determine the asymptotics of the chromatic, uh, chromatics, click chromatic number of GNP? Because that we prove the order of magnitude is over log n. So here the problem is Determine the asymptotic. So, what is the constant factor over here? And um, maybe someone will guess the simple lower bound work because that was a simple lower bound, the chromatic index result for GNP. So, because the simple lower bound look at the following, we need to first we need to cover all the edges inside to this vertex by clicks. Therefore, we need at least so many clicks to cover the edges. And because those clicks intersect with this vertex, we need to receive different colors. Therefore, the click chromat number is at most, is at least the maximum degree of GMP over the click number of GMP, which is roughly this one. So someone may guess, oh, this is asymptotic, so the constant factor look at this. But actually, that is not true because this lower bound can be improved to the following kind of bound, which is 
where the factor can be input to one plus some function fp, where the function fp is greater than zero. Uh, for the most interesting case, when p equal to one half, uh, this one is, this function is equal to one. Therefore, as you can see, uh, there are some, the simple lower bound can be improved. Uh, it's not clear what the asymptote should be. Okay, so this is an open problem. So as a summary of this talk, uh, at the beginning, we determine what is the product dimension of our graph. That is the minimum chromatic index of the click covering of combining of graph G. And we prove that uh, with high probability, the product dimension of binomial random graph GMP has the order of magnitude uh, over log n for all constant p. Uh, and our result verifies a conjecture by a Sudian counter from 2018. And to prove our result, we use two random greedy approaches. First, we use a semi-random algorithm to find the click cover of GMP. And then we use a random greedy algorithm to color the clicks in the click covering. And as a new tool for the second part, random greedy part, we get some chromatic index result for random hypergraph, which allows the edges of the hypergraph to be as large as log n, not just a constant. Okay, some open problem. One is, that, as I mentioned, what is the syntactics of the product dimension? Because here we only determine the order of magnitude of it. And secondly, for actually for some, for p 10 to 0, we determine a syntactics of uh, chroma, uh, click chroma number, four. but there are some gaps in the uh, probability p. So it's, uh, we are interested in, is it possible to close the gaps? Okay, so let me stop here. Thanks for listening. So is there any question? Well, thank you very much. Um, if everyone could uh, thank our speaker in some way. And uh, are there any questions for, uh, for our speaker? Um, I did have one, one, I mean, one question that I think you probably answered, but I didn't ca quite catch. Okay. Um, so it was with the, um, <clears throat> you had some, oh, hold on, let me, <laughs> I mean, I, I'm trying to think of the right slide. It was towards the end, actually. You had some quantity raised to the K power, and I wasn't quite sure what the K was there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, here K is, uh, K is the uniformity of the hypergraph. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> okay. I got you. Thank you. I wasn't sure because then, yeah. So, so I guess, okay, that, that part is fixed for that particular uh, instance of the problem, or I don't know if that's the right way to think of it. Because um, if, yeah, you can see in K, K some function of the number of vertices. Here we allow it to be a function of n. Yeah. I see. Okay. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> uh, any other questions for our speaker? Uh, in one of the last few stars, you said that the uh, lower body is one plus f of p. What is f of p? Uh, can I repeat the question? Yes. Not here. Yeah, it's near the end, I think you said. Uh, oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah, I think so, that is some function involving logarithm. I do not remember it correctly. But some key properties you should know about this f is that uh, first, first of all, fp is always positive. 
So you can see that. So this 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 one is not true. The one is not true. That's the one property. Another property is that when p equals one half, where you take each uh, n vertex graph unit from random, this one is one. So you have some, you you can improve to a factor of two actually. The simple so, the simple lower bound. So. Do you believe it's uh, like at p equals one half? This should be removed the factor of two. Is that is that the right uh, conjecture? Um, uh, no. The story is like the following. So you may guess the syntax look like this one, but actually here it can be proved. So in this one, it's actually the factor is one, but actually it can be improved to two. By some other approaches, that can be put to. Two. Yeah, I just said is two is the right uh, coefficients. Um, yeah, if we want to make some conjecture, then maybe two is the correct thing to conjecture. <laughs> okay, thanks. Yeah. yeah, and another thing about this f is that this is an increasing function. Uh, when p tend to one, this function tend to infinity. So. Right. Uh, let me ask just one more time. Uh, any questions for uh, for Dr. Guo? If not, then uh, I'd like to thank you again. I know it's it's quite late there, <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, I really appreciate it. Um, and. Uh, um, yeah, thank you for, for an excellent talk. I always like to see, um, it's always interesting when you can uh, show the existence of something using um, algorithms. <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot for attending. Mm -hmm. and, thank you, uh, bye. <laughs> yeah. bye. So uh, let, me just, let me just end by saying uh, next week is, is Thanksgiving break. So uh, we will not be having a seminar next week. Um, but um, yeah, everyone have a safe and uh, and uh, a well-deserved break. <laughs> so thank you, everyone. <laughs>